G'day Floss Tube. it's Anna aka Maramalist back with another stitchy update. It is January 19th. Welcome back to anybody who's returning. Thank you for joining me to anybody that's new. Um, yeah, I hope everybody else enjoys these videos. I, um, I always wonder, but um, it is good to hear from those of you that comment. And please feel free if there's something you want to see more of or less of, etc. Let me know. Um, I've actually decided I quite like doing these even if it's just for myself because it's a good record and diary and yeah it forces me to keep track of a few more things so it's good to actually be able to tell you a bit more clearly when I started things and finished things and whatnot and then know for myself later on down the road. Anyway I have my coffee my barista in training brought me one just a few minutes ago he tells me he's going to open his own coffee shop when he's old enough, so if anybody else is in the area and needs coffee, go check it out. You might have to wait a few years. He's only 11. Um, so, today we have uh, a finish. We have a couple of imminent new starts, and we actually have a reasonable amount of progress on a couple of different things. So let's start with the super exciting finish. Um, and the plan is, I haven't done it yet, but the plan is to upload a detailed picture of this, or to add film one, to get slotted into the video. But there you can see the Indian Peacock. This was a dimensions kit. Um, I did not stitch it on the kit fabric. I, um, it was just a neutral colored Ada. I gave it away. I don't use Ada. Um, this, the fabric I used was 32 count sweet cherry pie by um, Color Cascade Fabrics. So it's a 32 count Belfast. Um, yeah, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love the way it turned out. Fair bit of backstitch for those people that don't like backstitch. All those flowers and leaves and a fair bit in the peacock, particularly his tail. So it was a couple of days for me to backstitch all of that. Um, and I probably had it half finished before I got to the end, um, just because I didn't want to leave it all to the end. I found a lot of this background texture stitching quite tedious. You've done the fun part of the peacock and seen that come to life and it's like, why am I stitching more blobs? But quite enjoyed it. Love the colors. It's, just, it's awesome on this fabric. Love it. So no idea when I will fully finish it. The reality is it'll probably sit in the box until I have some inspiration and that may not be anytime soon. So, yeah, don't be waiting for a fully finished next week because you're not going to find it. Um, so, hold on, reorganize. Uh, yes, if I have a detailed close up, I'll insert it now for you. G'day, Floss Tube. Um, you're precariously perched again, so we can get a bit of a detailed look at the. Uh, Indian Peacock project that I just finished. Uh, I said in the video that this is not the kit fabric. This is a 32 count linen from Color Cascade Fabrics. Um, the threads are the kit threads with the exception of the metallic through the tail. The charted thing is actually a very yellow gold through the tail, but in my world peacocks are blingy so we needed bling. And I basically, anywhere that yellow gold was charted, I just swapped it out for the metallic. So it's through the tail, it's around this eye. I debated about the eye. There's not a whole lot of definition of the eye, and I thought about switching it to the brown. Um, I wonder whether I should have, even in person, there's not a great deal of definition, but I think at this point, I'm just gonna leave it. But if you're changing your own, you may want to consider it. And then in the tuft um, as well, it's all metallic instead of that yellow gold. 
Up here in the flowers, the yellow gold was used to do French knots. Actually, a bit of a fluke. I don't know whether it was a problem with the pattern or not. This particular flower up here did not have French knots charted, but it was identical to the flowers at the bottom that did have French knots charted in terms of the way the flower was open. So I added them because I thought it looked funny just to have the two flowers at the bottom without the one at the top without with French knots. I was a bit nervous about doing the French knots in that metallic. That is Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid 73, I think, um, a bright gold. Um, but, you know, for as much as French knots can always be a pain in the butt, these were no more or less of a pain in the butt than French knots typically are. So I was pleased with how that worked out. Um, I don't think they're super shiny and metallic-y. The uh, Petite Treasure Braid is... The 73 that I used is not quite as high luster as, say, like the Krynik 202 HL. I think that's the code for the bright gold. Um, so it always was going to be more subtle, but then I think when you kind of twist it around, it doesn't grab the light quite the way it does when it's laid out flat here. Um, the other change was through here, it actually charted some of the, uh, I think the main bits of the feather were charted to be done with two strands of the yellow gold and one strand for all the little fribbly bits that come off to give it a bit of texture. And I tried that, but two strands versus one strand of the metallic, I didn't feel like it made any kind of difference worth noting. So I just did all of mine with the one strand metallic and I think it looks fine. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, so I think I mentioned in the main video, there's actually quite a lot of back stitching in here. So if you are an anti back stitching person, you know, all through these feathers, it's back stitching all in here. This is maybe not the pattern for you. Um, you can see all in there and down there and more flowers, you know, so it's very backstitch heavy. Um, unlike a lot of Dimensions kits, this doesn't have the six strand nonsense. It's fairly straightforward in that regard. It's just most everything's over two, uh, sorry, two strands. There is can't even really tell. There's one or two colors in where it's only one strand instead of two. Um, but it's pretty minimal. Uh, actually, this in the middle here, this brown is done in one strand, whereas the bulk of the background texture is done in two strands. So, I'm not super convinced I'm a fan of the one strand versus two strand. I think in, if I was doing it again, I'd probably just do it all in two, but you know, to each their own. Um, I was just glad to see it didn't have six strands, because sometimes that can be a pain in the butt, dimensions. Um, so yeah, here's the other, uh, don't know that they're even coming in the video, the other French knots that I did uh, in the pattern and I basically went off the fact that you can see the blue peeking through in the very base of the flower and it was peeking through in the top one too so I figured they were charted oh here's just one more they were charted with French knots at the bottom therefore they should have been charted with French knots at the top and I just arbitrarily went and scattered a bunch around I didn't even really think about it too hard so um, looks like I still need to uh, put my initials and date on there. I was kind of debating where to do it. I think I might try and stick it in here even over the top of the half stitches. I don't know how that'll work. Otherwise, maybe along that bit of branch there's no stitching. But that's all she wrote for the Indian Peacock. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be too long and I'll be able to do another one of these close-ups with the Chatelaine. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, so other than that, I have been working on my um, Aura of Autumn. Let me have a picture of what it will actually look like. Hold on to show you. So 
the pattern actually has all three panels. I'm currently just working on this panel. Uh, I think last time I filmed, I basically finished one page where it's along the bottom. There's about five pages, I think, to each row. So now I'm coming up just at the bottom of the... Ugh, that reflection is terrible. Just at the bottom of the um, legs of the park bench. You can just start to see this bit of wrought iron work there. So, I'm not going to take it out of the cue snap because I'm hoping to finish the next page um, before I put uh, the fantasy triptych back on here. The next page comes about there, I think. Um, so I'm about halfway there. But like I said, you, that's where you can start to see the that curve of the wrought iron. That's leg of the bench. So I'm pretty pleased to actually be able to get to the point where I can see some of the park bench that's in the um, picture. And, you know, this area stitches a fair bit faster because it's not quite so tedious with the uh, confetti stitches. So it's nice. You can see just a little bit up here. I started this curve of the wrought iron several uh, stitches up, probably 10 stitches up from where it should be. Almost an entire thread had to rip it all out because I figured of all the things to muck up in this piece, that one you'll know this. So ripped it all out and you know, you can see I've started to put it back in again. Um, over here, you probably can't see in the video, um, I accidentally pulled three strands. Most of this is done two over two on a, just a generic even weave. Um, but for one thread up here, I accidentally pulled three. And I'm stitching away, stitching away. God, this feels really thick. This is odd. You know, it should be easy stitching this bit. Um, yeah, sure enough, as soon as I actually stopped to look at what I was doing, it's quite noticeable that, yes, it was substantially thicker because it was an entirely extra strand. That one I did not rip out. I figured, like, I can see it plain as day, and I'm sure any other stitcher could. But... You know, my husband and kids, they'll never notice that. So, that's staying. So, that was that. Um, actually, for the, the, this pattern, there's about two columns make a baby page. So, I've had a baby page finish. So, a little bit of credit from Stitch from Stash. Um, February, or January, oh, getting ahead of myself there with February. January is not quite over. So I'm not going to tally the uh, stitch from stash yet. We'll do that probably next time I um, film, I suppose. The other thing I've been working on. It's only got a couple of days, actually. Just get a picture of what it's going to look like when it's done. Clearly, leaving them in the packets is not ideal. So this is a Pearl of the Orient Seas by... Um, Bellafina Designs and doing this as a stitch along with Aussie Stitcher and some of the others locally. So there's an Instagram hashtag if anybody cares to follow along on that or join us. Always more the merrier. Um, I'll try and run that underneath. Should have a picture of where she was before. And let's grab my board. This is where she's at now. So I can't really remember where she was at when I last showed her, but my guess is I filled in more of the tail and I've started to come up a little bit. Ooh, apparently I have metallic there in the thing. I didn't know I'd put that away, half thread done. Um, yeah, I started coming back up along that side, but really I'm trying to finish up that tail is my goal at the moment when I'm not distracted. Clearly, I, uh, I don't know what happened, but I got distracted mid-thread and, uh, walked away from this and haven't been back to it for more than a week now. So, I'm pretty pleased with how she's turning out. Um, this is... Hold on, I'm losing my needle. This is a uh, 
another 32 count Belfast from Color Cascade Fabrics and it is called Dark Fantasy. So I love that vibrant blue color. It's a gorgeous fabric. So I'm pretty sure I've said before, um, but if you're looking to try hand dyed fabrics, no qualms recommending the Color Cascade fabrics. Once you get them, they are phenomenal, but be aware you will wait and you may wait in a substantial amount of time. So before you order, be prepared for that, expect it, and yeah, the fabrics once they show up though are very, very nice. So, um, the other thing I've been working on is, of course, the Chatelaine. As per usual, this thing's too big to figure out which way it goes. So, I'm down to... That's not right. I'm working on this corner. So I'm down to all I have left is the four big trees. And those two, except for the odd uh, stitch that I might still have in there, but I think those two are totally done, leaving me just these two to do. Um, and you can see, I think most of the trunk for this one is done, and that one's got a reasonable start as well. I had hoped to finish another tree today, but I don't think I'm going to get there. So at this point, I really hesitate to put this down until I finish the last two trees and can move on to the next stage because I'm pretty excited to see some of the specialty stitches and whatnot go in here that's missing. Um, you can see I did go back. Most of these gates are totally empty yet. But they do have a few regular cross stitches in the legs. Um, and then there's just a smattering, maybe a dozen, across the top of the gates. Um, so I've started putting in the few that are there in those legs. Um, so that when I go through and do the specialty stitches, I don't have to do those cross stitches. I, um, I suspect up here, because there's so few cross stitches, I'll probably end up doing the specialty ones first and then filling in the cross stitches. Uh, so I love the way it's turning out. My daughter's a bit miffed that these aren't bright orange, so I don't know what color the specialty part is done in yet. I have to go back and look at the pattern, but according to her, they're meant to be sort of a bright ready orange, and these are just not on. So, but I like them. Okay, so I think that is everything I've worked on. Um, as far as what I'm planning to start, I will have to insert a picture because I don't um, have a digital or a printed copy or anything. But I just bought off Etsy um, Cute Patterns by Maria or something like that. It's a cute little whale um, sitting on a life ring. I have a new nephew um, over in West Australia and we're going to go visit said nephew um, in a couple of months so I wanted to take something cute um, so having a dig through and you know finding fabric and finding the colors and whatnot I was going through now these are all out of order um, I was going through the colors that the pattern called for and oh, that's sorry while well, I reorganize that. So it's going through the patterns the color called for, and I didn't have a lot of the blues in the actual whale. And now I could just go to the spotlight and buy them, but I have all these blues. Um, so this is a mixture of silks for you and dinky dyes. Um, the pattern has a few blends. I am thinking I will simplify probably with the blends. There's about eight or nine shades of blue. Obviously, I've only got seven, six here. 
So I think I'm going to kind of fudge and combine a couple of the colors to simplify the pattern down to the six colors and then use this palette of blues to stitch the whale. Um, it'll be nice to get the, uh, you know, have an excuse to use some of these silks that I've been hoarding and not using. And uh, it's a bit of a brighter palette than the pattern originally called for. So once I get to the um, life buoy that he's sitting on, I, I may have to double check and see what the DMCs it called for and pick a new range and whatever to see how it matches. But I think at this point I will start with the whale, see how we go, and um, we'll work from there. So that's the plan and hopefully I've inserted a picture so all of this conversation makes sense. Um, that I'm actually hoping I will get started with the first few stitches today because uh, I need to get cracking if I'm going to have that done in time for our trip to the west because that will have to be fully finished before then. The other start I need to do more or less ASAP. Sorry, I thought I pulled everything off. The other start I need to do more or less ASAP going on the exact same 32 count linen I think it's 32 I had to literally count it is this one the retreat stitch um, so heart string samplery queen bee pin cushion um, this is a stitch for a finishing class that will happen at the retreat I think there might be some spots left if you're South Queensland area or willing to go there. Um, Ping Devana Lee Design Studio. I'll leave a link and she'll be able to give you all the details. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. That'll be my first retreat and have this. I will have it stitched so that we can do the finishing class once we get there. And again, I've gone and rated my stash for random colors that I think will work. And so we're going to kind of fudge that one and play it by ear and make it unique. Um, that'll be a good exercise because it's, it's not the sort of thing I normally stitch. And so I don't feel any great pressure that it has to be perfect. Um, and so that gives me a bit of... I can learn as I go. Whereas the whale's a bit more high pressure because I want to give that as a gift. It's like, do I really want to be tinkering and stuff it up? But a lot of those blues for the whale came in one particular Silks for You batch that all color coordinated. So that makes me feel a bit safer. That was the September 2019 Silks for You. And I think that covers like four out of the six colors are from that palette. So can't stuff that up. Some of the earths has already done it for me and it looks nice. Um, so that's everything I've worked on, everything I'm starting. I, that was the whale. Okay, so I do have a few things that I've acquired. You know, this whole I was doing stitch from stash and not acquiring anything. Obviously, I bought the whale pattern. Um, kind of hard to do a gift for Flynn without that, but I uh, don't feel too bad about that. You only get new nephews every so often. But one of the ladies um, locally was getting rid of some mirror patterns, so I picked up a couple of second hand. Um, so this is My Lady's Garden. It's a 95. I just, I really like the colors and the dress and whatnot. Um, again, it's not something I would typically find myself super drawn to, so I suspect this will go in the stash for one day. Um, but I really do like it, so yeah, one day. Uh, yeah, 95. A few things of Krynik in there and a few water lilies it calls for, but most of it's DMCs. Um, 
The other one, as per, you know, secondhand patterns, they're not always in the bestest of condition. So all I've got for the other one is the a photocopy of the picture. Um, oh, the name's written down somewhere. I think it's Woodland Fairy. Um, so I thought she was really cute. You know, again, if there was a new niece and I had time to stitch a mirror, got to tell all the aunts and uncles to... Uh, I need another niece because I need an excuse. All right. The other thing um, was just a gift. Somebody had a spare. It's one of the old ones. It doesn't have the 100s and it doesn't have the new 35. But at least this way when I have, uh, you know, a pattern that calls for colors that I don't actually have in my stash because I don't have a full set and I have no intention of getting a full set. At least this gives me some guideline for a lot of the colors when I'm trying to look through the silks and whatnot and pick out what I need. So I've already been in digging um, because this 311 about here was one of the colors for the whale that I didn't have. Um, yeah, so this this sort of range is what the whale is meant to be. And if I pull up Meh. So now I've lost. So those are those are what it's kind of meant to be, you know. So that's a fair bit brighter, but I don't know. I think it'll be good. We're experimenting. Oh, good. So I think that is it for everything for me. Um, I haven't done a giveaway in a while, and since I finished. Uh, the Indian Peacock. I no longer need the charts or anything for that. So I thought I would gift away so you can see um, the cover is kind of beat up. Uh, again, hazard of secondhand charts. Um, gift my copy of the chart and the spare threads that I have from stitching this. So the pattern itself is in good nick. I don't mark my patterns. Um, I make a working copy, even though I don't mark them. They're in a binder, so they don't get bent up the way this does. Um, this wouldn't fit in my binder to keep it neat. Uh, so the pattern itself is in good nick. The threads are just the kit threads. I doubt there's enough to stitch the entire piece in its entirety in some of the colors. Uh, however, there is certainly enough for you to color match whatever you want. And of course, there's, um, you can always Google a dimensions to DMC sort of conversion and see what that recommends as well. Um, but certainly some of the colors, there are a fair bit left. I just figured like that brown that actually uses quite a bit, um, maybe not enough to do a second pass. So... If you have any interest in, in stitching the Indian Peacock, um, say something in your comment with the word bird. I'll use that as a filter um, so that I know you're interested in stitching the peacock. And I will leave this open until the next time I film, which will roughly two weeks. I make no guarantee on the actual date. Um, but I will draw it immediately before I film so that then I can tell you in the filming whoever won the giveaway. Um, I'll ship internationally, B18, don't say giveaway. Um, yeah, be happy with secondhand charts and, you know, a bit of banged up uh, pictures. Um, so, other than that, I think we're all good, and I will catch you next time. Happy stitching. Bye.